I do, because that's the thing, is my jokes are a lot of times true stories. People ask me all the time, Brad, you're a comedian. How do you write your material? I don't. Here's how I write jokes. Step one, be a dwarf. Step two, wait. <laughs> Funny shit's gonna happen to you. I never know when. It's not like I look down, like, oh, three o'clock. Funny shit's about to happen. No, you know, it's not like that. It just happens randomly. Like, not too long ago, I took my mom out to lunch. Uh, now, before I go on with this joke, uh, just know that my mom is not a little person like me. And my dad, not a dwarf. No. I know, we don't have to all come from the same tribe. Uh, you can't, like, drive down the street and be like, which house do the dwarves live in? It's the mushroom with the door in it. So my mom is driving, I'm in the passenger seat, not a booster. Fuck off. I'm the normal chair, like a big boy. And my mom comes behind this guy. Now, this guy's trying to turn down a one-way street, but he's going the wrong way down the one-way street. And this is causing all sorts of traffic, and people are honking, getting very upset. My mom is right behind him. She is polite. She's a prim and proper Southern belle from Savannah, Georgia. And she looks at the guy, she goes, uh, excuse me there, sir. I don't believe you can make a left-hand turn at this particular intersection. <laughs> I know, you hear that, you want lemonade right now, don't you? Like, that's my mom. And then this guy proceeds to look at my mother and goes, why don't you shut the fuck up? I'm killing you right now, okay? <laughs> I'm killing you, you say that to my mom? That's my mom, I love my mom. She gave birth to me, and just so you know, giving birth to a dwarf is not easy. It's not like you just sneeze and we fly out of there, okay? Like. <laughs> The doctor isn't sitting there with a the catcher's mitt, like, you know, like that, that doesn't happen. No, it is very hard to give birth to a little person. When I was born, my head was about the same size as it is right now, okay? Do you understand what that means? And my mom never complained. She never once complained. My dad, he complains about it all the time. He tells me, like, you realize that was the first pussy you ever tore up? But yeah, that's my mom. She gave birth to me. I will defend this woman. I will die for this woman. So I get out of the car and I start yelling at this guy, what the hell did you just say? What the hell? Get out here. Get out here, you son of a bitch. Let's go, asshole. And he gets out of the car. I'm like, oh shit, this is actually happening right now. Okay, uh, <laughs> this is going to come as a shock to you people. Uh, I don't know how to fight. <laughs> no such thing as midget UFC, okay? Like, there should be midget UFC. <laughs> that would be awesome. Like me and Wee Man in a ball pit at Chuck E. Cheese. Like, Let's get it on. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not. So I don't know how to fight. The only fighting I know is stuff I learned from video games in the 90s. This guy's charging at me, and I have some weird instinct. I just look at him and I go, Hadouken. <laughs> like that, and I just. I just say Hadouken. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, I will explain. There was a video game in the 90s called Street Fighter 2. Okay, Street Fighter. Yeah. There were two characters in that game. They wouldn't just punch and kick. No, they would yell out Hadouken and they would throw a fireball from their hands. A fireball, because that might be useful in a fight. Eh, punch, kick, fireball. It, it works. And that's what I do. I'm like, Hadouken. I just yelled it out. You think I'm crazy, but this shows you how much people don't know about little people. I yelled out Hadouken. This guy flinched and then like ran away. He ran away. Do you understand what that means? That means that when I yelled out Hadouken, this guy thought, well, he is a dwarf. He can probably throw a fireball. I'm booking it. At that point, I would give all my money, all of my money, to be there when this guy told his friends this story. <laughs> no, bro, you have no idea what happened to me, man. I yelled at this woman today, she got pissed off, she had a button on her car, an attack midget just like ran out of her car like that. And the attack midget starts throwing fireballs at me. I had to block it and like dodge and do that. I didn't even know they had attack midgets. I have seen every episode of MTV Cribs. You never saw a fitted set like, yo, this is my Mercedes, and it comes with a motherfucking attack midget right there. It never happened. And you would assume that from Mercedes or BMW, sure, but based on what I saw today, let me tell you right now, Kia has stepped their game up. <laughs> and common everyday activities can turn into crazy stories at any time. 
I was having lunch not too long ago with my best friends, Adam, and we're at a McDonald's. I know, I've made it in show business. <laughs> and now this particular McDonald's had a, 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 a play place attached to it, all right? And me and Adam were just sitting there, we're talking. All of a sudden, this kid, I don't know if he thought that I was threatening his hood or like invading his turf, but he just runs out of the play place. He's got a ball from the ball pit, sees me and just hucks this and <laughs> nails me right in the head. Can't miss this son of a bitch, okay? <laughs> so I pop up I'm like, what the hell? I see it's a kid, I don't care. I have street credit, I gotta defend myself. I'm going after the kid. I start walking after him. Now Adam, my friend, he's a tall guy, but he essentially works for me. So he's like, all right, I guess we're beating up seven year olds today. And he started walking after him. Now this particular play place must have had an incident of some kind because they had a security guard. And he sees Adam coming towards me. He's like, hey, you can't come in here. And he looks at me, he's like, yeah, you can come on in here, that's cool. I'm not offended, I just got the green light to whoop some ass. So I run into the play place, I look around, I see the kid, but the other kids that are there in the play place, they see me walk in, they start clapping and cheering and getting all happy. I'm like, what the, and then I realize they think I'm a new mascot. Like, there's the Hamburglar and Ronald McDonald, and now there's the McNugget midget, apparently. Like, I'm gonna make it rain, sweet and sour thoughts, you know? And, and now they're clapping, but I see the kid, and he sees me, we lock eyes, and he turns around and he runs up the slide. Now he's in the tubes, because he thinks he's safe in the tubes. You dumb fuck. You are not safe in those tubes. I am four foot four, I can run in those tubes, okay? I get in the tubes, I'm Super Mario, and he got the star. I'm good. So I run up the tube, I see the kid, I run right up to him, I grab him, I start dragging him out by his little stride right, okay? I'm dragging him out. Yes, I know what stride rights are, I sometimes have to wear them myself, okay? <laughs> Not all the time, sometimes you guys get sexy shoes, you guys got real sexy shoes tonight, these are good. I don't always wear these, sometimes I gotta do shows and I got lights blinking from my shit. Not that sexy. <laughs> now I'm yelling at the kid, why'd you throw the ball at me? That was not very nice, you don't do that. As I'm yelling at him, the kid's dad is running up behind me, pissed off. I don't see the dad. I'm just yelling at the kid. But Adam, my friend, he sees the dad. He does what any good guy friend would do. He goes, let's see what happens here. <laughs> the dad runs up, grabs me by the shoulder hard, whips me around, sees my face and goes, I was not expecting that. <laughs> like, what were you expecting? I think he thought I was a kid. Then when he whipped me around, saw my beard, it was like, I was not expecting that. <laughs> it's like, I'm 30, you shouldn't say that to another man. The only time you should say that is if you're making out with a chick, you pull off her skirt, she's got a dick. I was not expecting that. <laughs> so now the dad's in this weird circumstance. He looks at me, he looks at his kid, he looks at me, he looks back at his kid, he goes, I can do nothing for you, boy. And he starts walking up. That's what I know, I've won. I got away with it. And this dad wanted to hit me. He wanted to hit me, but you can't punch a dwarf. You punch a dwarf, that's a hate crime, <laughs> all right? And, and I got away with it. That's the best part about being a little person. The best part is that you can get away with stuff. I get away with stuff all the time because I'm adorable. <laughs> if you're cute, you can do things. I can steal and it's fine. It's fine, I've done it. I was at a grocery store not too long ago. I was there with my buddy. He dared me to steal something. Your buddy dares you to do something, you gotta do it. So I go to the cookie aisle. I get a crap load of Keebler cookies. I put them on my shoulder and I just start walking out of that place with the Keebler cookies. Now, this little 17 year old clerk sees me, he walks up, he's like, oh, excuse me, sir, are you gonna pay for those? And like a boss, I just look at this guy, I go, nah, bro, my family makes these, it's cool. <laughs> Of course he let me go. In his mind, he's like, yeah, he's here doing quality control. I can't stop that from happening. 